There are so many different kinds of alcohol one can drink once they come of the legal age in the country in which they live. Said drinks generally fall into categories of wine, beer, and liquor. What defines each of these categories? Hi there, I'm Laura Youngblood, and welcome to my YouTube channel, From Laura's Perspective. What are the many categories of alcoholic beverage made of? Before I start, I want to remind everyone that this video is just one of the many video essays I've made for my library of a channel, which you can gain access to by hitting that subscribe button. And if you tap the bell icon, you'll get an alert on your phone when my library gets a new edition. But now, let's start talking about what each drink is specifically comprised of. Any distilled beverage made from the blue agave plant can be called tequila. The liquor is actually named for its city of origin, located 49 miles northwest of Guadalajara in the Mexican region of Jalisco. The red volcanic soils in this part of Mexico make for the perfect environment for the blue agave plant to grow in. In fact, Tequila can only be made within the Mexican states of Guanajuato, Michoacan, Nayarit, Tamaulipas, and Jalisco. After the agave finishes growing in the fields, it's taken to a factory where the plants are shredded through three separate processes and then sugar is extracted from the shredded agave so that Agave can be obtained from this solution and sugars can be converted into fermentable sugars. The agave goes through several rounds of fermentation, distillation, and filtration. The tequila must then be aged by allowing it to sit in white oak barrels for either two months for classic tequila or 12 to 36 months for añejo or aged tequila. Vodka generally comes in three different varieties, Polish, Russian, and Swedish. As I mentioned in my recent video, Alcohol Across Cultures, there's a region of Europe called the Vodka Belt, which consists of Belarus, Estonia, Finland, Iceland, Latvia, Lithuania, Norway, Poland, Western Russia, Sweden, and Ukraine. Vodka is usually at least 40% alcohol by volume and is generally made by distilling liquid from fermented cereal grains and potatoes, but can also be distilled from other starch and sugar rich plant matter, including corn, rye, wheat, rice, or beet. It's been said that vodka is one of the spirits less likely to cause a hangover since it uses fewer congeners during fermentation. Notable brands of vodka include Absolute, Smirnoff, Rikoloff, Pinnacle, and Kamchatka. Here are a few fun facts about mojitos. A cocktail whose base liquor is rum in my video, Six Facts About Mojitos. Rum is probably the sweetest tasting spirit there is, though that's probably not saying much, made by fermenting and distilling sugarcane molasses or sugarcane juice. Today, rum is commonly associated with pirates, sailors, the Navy, the Caribbean, and unfortunately, the Atlantic slave trade. The sugar cane used to make the rum is usually collected with a special machete, then cut into small lengths from which the water and sugar juice are extracted. After the rum is distilled, it must be aged for at least a full year in a barrel cask or stainless steel tank. Popular brands of rum include Calypso, Bacardi, 
and Captain Morgan. Gin gets its distinctive flavor from juniper berries and was actually originally made by European monks and alchemists as a medicinal liquor. Gin is generally distilled through one of three methods, pot, column, and compound. The former of these is probably the oldest and most traditional method and consists of pot distilling a fermented grain mash from barley or other grains, then redistilling it with flavoring botanicals to extract the aromatic compounds. The second method, column distillation, came about with the invention of the coffee still, spelled C-O-F-F-E-Y. In this method, a high proof spirit is distilled on a still from a fermentable base such as sugar beets, grapes, potatoes, sugar cane, or other similar material. This spirit is then redistilled with juniper berries and other botanicals in a pot still, and the botanicals are often suspended in a gin basket to allow steaming alcoholic vapors to extract flavor from the botanicals. A gin variety known as London Dry Gin is often made with this method. The latter method of gin distillation Compound distillation involves flavoring neutral spirits with essences, other natural flavorings, or natural botanical ingredients left to infuse in neutral spirit without redistillation. The grain mash from which whiskey is fermented is sometimes malted, meaning the grain is steeped and germinated. Whiskey is one of the most regulated spirits in the world and is typically aged in wooden casks made of charred white oak. The stills with which whiskey is made are usually made of stainless steel. A single malt whiskey is made in one distillery from only one grain, whereas a blended malt whiskey is a mixture of single malt whiskeys all from different distilleries. Popular brands of whiskey include Crown Royal, Jack Daniels, Southern Comfort, and Black Velvet. Beer is probably the oldest and most widely consumed alcoholic beverage in the world. Beer is brewed from fermented starches, usually malted barley, but this can also consist of wheat, corn, rice, or oats. But the main ingredient in beer is water, which accounts for 93% of the weight of beer by volume. Today, more than ever, beer is also brewed with hops, the flowers of the plant Humulus lupulus. The purpose of the hops is to add bitterness and other flavors to the beer and to act as both a natural preservative and a stabilizing agent. Beer is brewed in special facilities called breweries, sometimes called brew houses. Beer usually isn't distilled like most other spirits, but when it is, it forms a special kind of whiskey. If you haven't already seen it, I actually have an entire video on wine and how bitter or sweet each of its variations are, which I've included a link to in the description and my end screen. Simply put, to make wine, grapes of many different red and green varieties are fermented in a process through which yeast consumes the sugar in the grapes, converting it to ethanol and carbon dioxide releasing heat in the process. The grapes themselves are grown on special plantations called vineyards, which are ideally located within regions of warm climate, which is why there are so many in, these, in sunny California. Red wine is made from the pulp of red and black grapes and fermented with the grape skins on. 
White wine is made by crushing the grapes to extract the juice, with the grape skins being removed and playing no role in the process. After the grapes are converted into wine, the wine is then aged in barrels, usually for about a year or two. Wine is very significant in many different religions, including its use in the Eucharist, in Catholicism and Orthodox Christianity, and in Judaism at the Shabbat Kiddush. What makes moonshine special? It's often produced illegally. In fact, its name derives from the fact that it's often made in the dark hours of the night so the manufacturers don't get caught. Distilleries produce many different varieties of moonshine, which come in many different flavors. Even if the moonshine tastes sweet, prepare for your throat to catch fire after you swallow it. The most likely reason that making moonshine is illegal is that it's often done through a method called fractional crystallization. This means that ethanol is concentrated in the moonshine by means of freezing. Through this method, the fermented juice starts out with an alcohol content of less than 10%, but by the time it's done freezing, the alcohol content can contain anywhere between 25 and 40% alcohol by volume. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video serves as a helpful guide as to how to differentiate between different types of alcohol and what makes each one unique. Do you have a preference for any one type of liquor or spirit? If so, let me know in the comments down below. And if you didn't already know, I've posted a lot of alcohol related content on my channel, but I've also done essays on topics such as food, business, politics, current events, music, movies, TV, and so much more. So if you like what you saw today, get even more by clicking one of the links on your screen. And if you find yourself enjoying it, subscribe to my channel to join my video essay library.